What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Vault Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Bike Clones Ursa. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will know that this has been five months in the making. I have had this figure for five months and have not had a chance to review it yet. There's a very good reason why. This is actually my fourth Ursa figure. That's right, fourth. The first one that came and showed up from Korea was just broken. The arms and legs fell off as soon as I took it out of the box. The second one was also broken. I took it out of the box and the torso fell off. And the third one that they shipped me was covered in glue. Its leg joints here and its arm joints up here were glued, glued to the point that I couldn't move or transform the figure at all. And then I got this one. And the electronics inside are completely broken. So I have had, I have spent five months trying to get a working Ursa figure from one eBay seller. I'm not going to mention the name because I don't think that's really, I don't think this is their fault at all. I think this is more of Young Toys' fault. I don't know why I have received four broken Ursa figures, but that's where I'm at. So, bear mode, it's not too bad. Its primary colors are the clear blue, very, very dark brown, gray, and maroon. The coloring scheme actually works, especially when you consider it's a giant robotic bear. But the fact that there is virtually no posability in this mode really does hamper the, the uh, bear mode. You can't really pose it in any meaningful way, and it, whatever pose I was thinking of doing is more like the robot mode than anything else. So, I... Uh, I'm trying to remain positive and point out the good parts and the bad parts for you guys, but considering my history with this figure, I'm not having much fun with it. Though I do appreciate that there appears to be a rocket sticking out of where his butt should be. I find that just amusing on a very 12-year-old level. Like all the other Bike Clones figures, this guy has a little cockpit. It is in his head, which I do like the fact that his ears are floodlights. His head flips open and you could drop a little Biclones humanoid figure in there. Though when I did it last, the figure got stuck and it was a real pain in the butt to get him out. Mouth opens as well with little hippopotamus-like teeth. Compared to the other figures, Ursa is significantly larger uh, by an exponential amount, really. It's kind of amazing to see how much bigger this one figure is compared to the others. But that's very normal when you take a look at, say, uh, the Transformers 5 team combiners. That central torso figure is always going to be significantly larger than the limbs. And that's kind of what we got going on here. Ursa's transformation is very, very easy. In fact, it's even easier than the original Biclones figures. To start, reach around the back of the figure and pull off this helmet and put that off to the side. Then take the rear legs and straighten them out. And once they're straightened out, actually grab the hips and push them down towards the bottom of the bear mode. Then come under to the, uh, the front or the back feet and fold up his claws and then stand the figure up. Once the figure is stood up, reach back behind the back of the figure or the back part of the figure, open up the back, and that's where the battery compartment is. Flip out the or flip in the bear head then take the arms rotate them a full 180 pull them forward to expose elbow joints grab the bear claws and they will flip around and peg into the bottom of what are the forearms and then there are buttons here on the side that extend the fists so we do the same thing to the other side extend the arm turn it 180 Flip out the bear, or flip around the claw, pop out the fist, and we're pretty much done. The only thing left is to attach the helmet back to the rear of the figure. And the only reason I remove it when I do is because, quite frankly, it has a tendency to fall off. And that's it. I will admit I really do enjoy this robot mode. It really reminds me of kind of a linebacker or a football player here in the U.S. And that is American football, not what we in the what we in the U.S. call soccer or what everybody else in the world calls football. Anyway, I like this. I really think this is a cool robot mode. I think it works very, very well. It's a nifty, just solidly chunky robot mode. 
I would love it if the lights and sounds worked, but unfortunately, they don't. <sighs> anyway, um, robot mode-wise, as I said, it works. It just looks really good. And Ursa in robot mode is in scale with the other two combiners. It is a little bit bigger, but it works. Again, all three of them together look pretty cool. Obviously, Ursa looks to be a bit beefier, but I'm fine with that. Next up is the merge sequence, and it's actually really, really easy. To start off with, we're going to take the arms, make sure they're straight, collapse them, put them forward, push in the fists, then rotate them all the way up so they're pointing straight up at the sky, and then open up the shoulders and fold them behind the head and just kind of leave them there. They don't actually peg in or anything. You just kind of leave them as is. Whoops. Remove the bike helmet thingy, come to the chest and open up the chest and it will actually peg in on the inside. So you reveal this like giant spark crystal cannon thingy. Then come to the feet and unpeg the bottom of the feet and just fold them up behind the figure, like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for getting him ready. And then we just start attaching limbs. First off, we'll start with Ares. Drop this one on the side here. Now when attaching the limbs, the one thing I have found is there's, it is beneficial to flip out the shins like that to just make attaching the components of the limbs easier. And Taurus, next to Scorpio, and Leo, and then Zehelmut. And here we have the final Biclones combined figure. And to be honest, it's not bad looking. I do not care for the amount of junk hanging off the back of the figure, as you see here. But overall, it's not a bad looking figure from the front. I actually do kind of like it quite a bit from the front. Ah, oh, there we go. Sometimes when you transform this guy or merge him together, you end up pushing the hips back again. It does help to push them forward for stability. The one thing that I'm really unhappy with is posability on this guy. I mean, he's got Super Sentai levels of posability where the arms move. Forget actually trying to pose his legs or anything. He's just too heavy. And as I said, heavy-wise, this guy is like 5 to 10 pounds. It is not light. And he's just got a whole bunch of junk hanging off his back. And aesthetic-wise, he's fine. Function-wise, he's garbage. For a quick size comparison for you, here is Supreme Starscream from Transformers Cybertron and MP10 Prime. As you can see, he's almost twice the height of MP10 Prime and is more in scale with Supreme Starscream. I want to be more positive on Ursa. I really do, but I just don't find the figure to be fun, good-looking, or very functional. Maybe going through four of them has been, well, clouding my judgment a little bit. I wouldn't deny that fact, but at the end of the day, I just don't find Ursa to be an interesting figure. And it really feels like the core figure has let down the entire Biclones line, which I thought had a ton of potential. But if these are the only figures we're going to be getting then I think it's time to hang up uh, Biclones and move on to something else. As much as I love Tobot, maybe we could return to something like that. Maybe a more Transformers-esque show. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'm having to manually spin the uh, turntable here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video review of Biclones Ursa. It's been a long time coming and has not been easy to get a figure that actually works. As always, I am Bolt Matrix, asking you to like, comment, and subscribe, and please be sure to catch my next video review.